Welcome back to the 2023 NFL Scouting Combine presented by Noble. You're getting a look here at the Dallas Cowboys Brain Trust as they get, keep their eyes trained on this field here in Indianapolis at Lucas Oil Stadium. Got a little bit of breaking news, not on this field, but on the Cowboys field. Sources say that standout running back Tony Pollard is going to receive the franchise tag. Get the two sides, can now work out a long-term deal by Tuesday's deadline. Obviously, Dallas not in the business of letting great players walk. Pollard really has emerged as one of the top running backs in the NFL. They're going to make sure that is exactly where he stays for the 2023 season. And really, not a surprise, Stephen Jones and a couple of the other members of the Dallas Cowboys, including Mike McCarthy, have been pretty public this week when meeting with reporters that they want to keep Tony Pollard around. Now I'm told that is expected to happen. So he gets the franchise tag, a little over $10 million, similar situation to Josh Jacobs, the Las Vegas Raiders star running back, also got the franchise tag earlier today. Those guys will continue to work toward a long-term deal toward the July 15th deadline. Also, uh, Saquon Barkley from the New York Giants, another potential franchise tag candidate if the Giants end up working out a long-term deal with Daniel Jones. So that is what is going on here in the NFL world away from sort of the prospects. Now let's send it over to Rich and DJ to keep our eyes trained on these prospects. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the Giants can't franchise two. Got to come only Take franchise one. one. Um, and, you know, I... I does it surprise you that they're franchise tagging Tony Pollard, does it? I mean, we now heard about Josh Jacobs and now Tony Pollard in a year where the running back group is really deep. There are a lot of quality running backs in this draft, and as much as we're going to talk about when we get there with B. John Robinson, how high do you take a running back? Has running back position been devalued? And here we have two guys that have been franchise tagged. Well, I mean, you heard the tag. It's, it's, it's palatable. It's yeah, like $10 million for the league leading rusher that Josh Jacobs became after they did not pick up his fifth-year option. I mean, and, and, and Tony Pollard I, I, is one of the best. I don't. He's great. I, in, in, refer to him as one of the best hey, running backs in the league. Check that box. One yeah. you know, the best home run hitters. But it doesn't matter. It's still running back, receiver. Like you're talking about, guy catches the ball anywhere on the field, can score from that. So I also think one of the reasons you're seeing him get franchise tagged is because they're reluctant to go into a new number of years on running backs. They're trying to take running backs on almost a year-to-year -year basis. Even you know with Derrick Henry, that was basically a two-year contract. There, a lot of these running back contracts have been of the very short-term variety. As great as Pollard was, I thought with the money that they had in that position with Ezekiel Elliott and yeah. this whole situation, which is is different, but that they might just say as much as we love Tony Pollard and as great as he's been with a deep running back group that they would you know, maybe take some of their resources elsewhere. How but, do you think Mike McCarthy calling the plays is going to look? Hot yeah, tub, Hot tub time machine? Yeah, going back in time and trying to go recreate the Packers of, of yesteryear. Um, I don't know. Their quarterbacks played pretty well under under Kellen Moore in that previous offense, and right. I know they want to run the football more. But uh, yeah, Everybody I think it's gonna now, it's gonna look me. more like what it used to look like in Green Bay than what we've seen over the last few years. Hmm. They've got to figure out with Dallas, by the way. When we talk about positional depth, the tight end group is as good as I've seen in 10 years. And Dalton Schultz, maybe that's the one who ends up moving on as a free agent. Ah, okay. So, yeah, you're on the 30. Zeke is Amon Green, is you're what you're saying? Let's go. Let's go. First man up. Let's go. Let's go. Well, I think Pollard's a little faster than Eddie Lacy, so I don't know who I give him the comp there. Charles is good for that. Yeah. Don't, hey, don't forget, it late in the late in the tenure, right? That was Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams before he moved on to Detroit. You know, Green Bay had there with Mike late in his tenure before leaving there and turning it over. How about James Starks? Nice. Oh, wow, there you go. There you go. Adam Roy Rich. Good pull. Thank you. Don't don't forget, don't get franchise tag as the Giants go through this with Daniel Jones. Yeah. And you talk $10 million to little Saquon Barkley. Quirk, you got to run through it. Run through it. When you get it, run through it. Find a ball. You sign one of them long term and then you franchise the other. And that's the way to go. I think that's the hope. But you got to get the deal done with one of them. But, you know, if, if talks are promised with Daniel Jones at quarterback and you can franchise Barkley at 10, I don't think it's 
out of out of the realm that the ghosts of Todd Gurley passed still loom over the running back rooms. I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going off the board here. Yeah. Nobody's talked to me in the truck. I'm just doing it, okay? Because we've been watching this, these drills and watching the corners and defensive backs all day. I need the name of a team. Guys, the ball is coming for the quarterback. Ball's coming quick, Helen. That might be in on one of these quarterbacks tomorrow. We're not thinking about. Oh, I'll see. Who's in on one of these quarterbacks tomorrow that we are just flat out because we're too focused on what the Jets are going to do and what are the Bears going to do with the pick and what the Texans and the Colts like. Give me somebody under the radar, Daniel Jeremiah. We're not talking about who's in on these quarterbacks tomorrow. Well, I know a lot of them that have been doing work, and one of those teams that you never hear mentioned with quarterbacks, or at least I haven't heard mentioned as quarterbacks, is the Minnesota Vikings. Are doing their homework on the, quarter, on the quarterback class. So that would be one. The Atlanta Falcons are doing a lot of work, too. And I know they've got Ritter, and it just seems like when we talk about those teams in the top ten as quarterback teams, yeah. we, we don't really talk about Atlanta, Charles, very but, much. But it's a, great, it's a great conversation because Atlanta's sitting there, and it's almost the, if you guys want to go ahead and take them before us, be our guest. But if somehow they're sitting there, I believe at eight, correct? Correct. They're sitting there at eight, and all of a sudden there's a decision to be made, and there's a quarterback they like. I don't think they'll turn that down. We've seen this so many times now where the quarterback money doesn't scare you anymore, as it didn't before. Cardinals, of course, prime examples, trading up for Rosen, a year later taking Kyler Murray. People will invest in it and go. Interesting. In on the, and that's why I'm, I'm not talking trading, no. making a big boom trade. Yeah. You know, I, I I speak to a lot of Falcons fans who would who are hearing Lamar Jackson's name is potentially available. And they're like, that would blow their mind. I mean, there'd be a lot of number eight jerseys that Arthur Blank and the Falcons could put. You know, on their on NFLShop.com, and go crush it. We heard what we're talking about tomorrow. The kids tomorrow <laughs> that some team would be in on, and you mentioned the Vikings. You got one, Charles? No, I was just going to say Kyle Pitts would make him pay for the jersey. Oh, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I, I was That's thinking, I was thinking all those Falcon uh, seven not. jerseys, Charles. They yeah. would just be trying to draw on those to turn those seven Vic jerseys into eight Lamar Jackson. But do you have one, Charles? No, I just want to go. I just want to go back to the Atlanta thing again okay. because what what DJ brought up. I am con I'm not convinced, but the feeling to me is they're not going to make that big move, Rich. But if all of a sudden you're sitting there with some other moves that are made around them, that's where they go. You know, that's, that's where you're sitting there. If you have a decision to be made, that's why DJ's about they're doing their work to be prepared. But I don't expect them to make a big move in order to make play, get that quarterback. All right, Peter Schrager, you're on the clock. Give me, give me, give me your team that uh, is in on the quarterback. Uh, on the quarterbacks tomorrow, we might not be talking about. Nothing Peter. definitive, Rich, but I do believe there's a team in Baltimore that's going through a quarterback quandary at the moment. I, I would be curious to see if the Baltimore Ravens are in the quarterback market. Maybe not in the first round, but at the very least some security in the situation and hey you start working some guys out you start looking into it uh this lamar jackson situation is real and we will see how that plays out in the meantime i would imagine one of the best scouting departments in the league has their eyes at the quarterback position they've been doing their homework here and talking to folks another team all right we're gonna get these guys out onto the field tomorrow watch them spin it bryce young will not be out there throwing it but stroud levis richardson and we're going to see a show with those three. Well, Levis says he's bringing the cannon with him. Time to show off. All right.